let me start so yesterday what we gone through we have gone through the our set data type so what is set and how these things will be vary from each other and all these things so we discuss about the set so today we're going to concentrate into a new, new more data type that is called as dictionary so what is a dictionary and what is the feature of dictionary and how will this okay so based upon the thing we discuss okay based upon the things there are four or four characteristics okay what are the four different different characteristics if you remember okay the first characteristics we have discussed about your heterogeneous object okay so if i'm gonna say whether dictionary is my primary dictionary okay what is the what is a dictionary look like <laughs> dictionary looks like a within a curly braces correct if you'll see there is no element within a curly braces this is known as your empty dictionary <laughs> this is known as your empty dictionary okay and the primary thing is that dictionary contains two or i can say value or <clears throat> variable type so what is that one is key another is value so this is what the simple dictionary look like so one key one value so what do you mean by a key key is nothing but a address to that of the value so so simple is that a dictionary looks like a some elements within a within a curly braces and the two important thing is that each value is assigned with one key so we call dictionary is nothing but a key value pair so dictionary is nothing but a is a key value pair so how can i write can i write this way key colon value pair okay so can can my dictionary contain more than one key value pair yes i can hold inside a dictionary let me define a dictionary can i write a dict one or anything d1 or d any variable you take so can i write this this way yes can i write k1 k1 stands for q1 and maybe i write v1 value one similarly can i write k2 color v2 v2 okay maybe i can go through k3 okay colon v3 okay so here can any <laughs> please tell me so what is the first pair k1 v1 is the first pair k2 v2 is the second pair and k3 v3 is the third pair of element okay so for the v1 which is the key k1 is the key for v2 which is the key k2 is the key and for v3 value 3 k3 will be the pair so each element or each key value pair is separated from another key value pair through a comma through a comma and the key is separated from the value through a colon got it so before that before colon what is there it's a key and after colon what is there that is a value and a key value pair is differentiated from another key value pair with a comma got it so this is the syntax you can say this is the syntax. Now, if I will say whether it's perfectly working or not. We'll check first. Whether whatever I said is it perfectly working or not. Let me write. Okay. If you'll say dictionary, I have dictionary and given a curly braces. And what is the type of D? It's a dictionary type. So you will not say that this is a which type. Don't say this is a set type. This is a dictionary type. Okay. If I will put, okay, let me put D right, D1 is equal to, okay, something. Check what will be the type. I am not writing anything. Okay, so what it is saying, invalid syntax. That means it should have a value and which is separated from each other, correct? So if I put it and use it, then it will come to a empty dictionary. The first is that how to create an empty dictionary, you can say. Now the second part, we're going to see how a full dictionary look like. Okay, how a full dictionary look like. The full dictionary will be 
this this is the syntax here which is the key one is the key python is the value two is the key java is the value three is the which one three is the key and sql is the respective value got it so this is how it looks like okay can anyone tell me whether my dictionary contains duplicate a uh, heterogeneous object or homogeneous object dictionary contains heterogeneous object because you can find key is a number and value is a string correct so my dictionary can contain heterogeneous object okay perfect so let's let me try let me try one thing you might have saying that key is always a integer no there is no such rule that key is always a integer key can be a string and can be a integer okay similarly the same rule is all apply into the value part also value can be a string and value can be an integer but whenever you are writing a value you just pass inside a or i'll say whenever you are writing a string just pass it inside a comma uh, sorry code so that it will be a, your value okay let's say just see here what i'm doing i'm writing key always as an integer but in the below example see here in the second thing which is a key which is a value can anyone tell me which is a key and which is a value here d is a value or d is a key So if you look this example, okay, if you look this example, here D is a key, even if it is a string type, even it is also a string type, it represents a key, correct? And even if 5 is a integer type, it represents the value, okay? Now we'll say that how to access the value based upon a key. Let's say, for example, someone want to print SQL, someone wants to print SQL. So how he will gonna print sql so what i will do okay what i will gonna do i will go and here i have written language a dictionary i am checking language dot get okay language dot get if i will pass the key if i will pass the key thing then what i will get the respective value i will get it perfect if i will write this way then i will get the respective value if someone wants to print java so what is the what is the use he will print? What is uh, what is the key he will gonna print? Tell me. Can anyone tell me what is the key he will gonna use? If I can write lang dot four. So what is the respective key for your Java? Is your four? Right. The respective key for the value Java is four. That's right. If I write dictionary dot get of your E, then you will get the respective value any doubt how to get the value and uh, e out of that so anyone might be say that okay anyone might be say that i can also use let's say for example here i am getting key as a uh, always integer let's say for example can i print f so can i write dictionary dot python Dictionary dot get dot python, you will get that respective value. Let me check. Yeah, you are getting the respective. Perfect. You are getting the respective value. So any doubt how to get the respective value? If not, if not, we will go to the next. Okay. If you want to print, if you want to print as well, okay. Let's say, for example, here I will print something called as I, even if this way, gateway also you can get the value. Even if there is a this way is nothing but your indentation way. What do you, not? I can say not indentation way here also. This is also one type of things where you can print your value. So, how to print? Let's say, for example, if I want to print 101 something, so I will pass. That respective key here, so the respective value will be gonna available. Perfect. This will so, support the duplicate. Uh, sorry, sorry. Any duplicate values are there? Then how? Yeah. 
ओके इफ एनी डुप्लीकेट सेल ओके द फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट टर्म रूल इज दैट की कैन नॉट बी गेट डुप्लीकेटेड ओके सो यू कैन नॉट पास टू की गॉट इट की कैन नॉट बी डुप्लीकेट की k1 k2 can not be duplicate okay let's try this one if you are having the same doubt let's say here i have a dictionary 1c okay let me create same dictionary can i run the same way if i write can i use one more one colon maybe i'll write something z okay so if you See, you got it because why is yeah you see why it's giving Z not C. You see, now if we are getting one and the same thing, one and C and one and Z, okay, here I am getting Z, but here what I change, I just change it to C, but I, so what will happen, okay, let me do one more example, let me put it here. Whenever you are saying what is happening, this you will get the last one. If the moment you will pass any time, the last one, what is happening? So my cursor is moving and searching this C. First, what will be the value of A? I'm passing the gate of 1. So it should be C. Okay. Now after what happened? My cursor moved to 1 and J. Okay. Now it's the value is J. Then my cursor moved to the key 1 and it's finding value as P. So, the second thing is that cursor moving to 1 and my value is x. But, 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 but in a thumb rule, but in a thumb rule, we will never repeat. We will never repeat key again and again. Key should be a identical. Okay. The key should always be a identical. That's what, what is happening. This key is always replaced by the next value. So, what I will say that don't use the repetitive key. So, if you want to retrieve a unique value, Go for that uh, means unique key assigned to a big value. What it gets? Yeah. But whenever you will use repetitive thing, the last value will gonna get, which is having the last in the dictionary. Because once the cursor will move from left to right, it will get a gonna updated, updated. Yeah. So one more thing, then we are gonna say. So, this is how we can retry. Okay. The same thing is applicable. Can a nested dictionary is applicable? Like we cover nested list. We cover nested um, our people. Uh, then we can we take a nested uh, dictionary? Yes. The nested dictionary is possible. The same way which we usually do. A key value. Correct. Again, I can I write again one key colon maybe some value can i use this way right uh, t is equal to key colon value it may be k1 v1 definitely K2, pardon, if I'm writing, can I write this way? Yes. So,
a three column matrix. Yeah. This is also I can use. Okay, this is it. And one more thing, or just give me a second. What what is the use of this dictionary? Okay, just give me a second. This will contain multiple values. What I am trying to say, this contain multiple values. Correct? X, Y, and Z. Okay. This will contain a multiple values. And next day dictionary will also say, what next day dictionary will do? Let me take example out of here. So, Yeah, Anvesh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where this dictionary function used means how, uh, like if we are doing any project, right? How how this is used means, what is the use of this dictionary? Dictionary always increase your performance. So whenever what uh, while we are using on a dictionary, so key is nothing but if you know the concept of indexing. So what, yeah, not here, index in SQL. So why actually what, what happened actually, when you go to the concept of indexing, let's say for example, I want to find some value A. I want to find some value A. So how I will find it? How I will gonna find it? Let's say for example, I have a list. Let me explain. What is the dif difference between list? If I write list, okay. I'll write one comma two comma three comma four something thus this n number of elements are there okay. i want maybe one more value is there that's what python i want to get a value python let's say for example i want to search a value python so how i will gonna get it so what i'll do i'll write a code what will go if i'll write a for loop okay i'm just writing a syntax for something then what I will define my value is equal to what I will define a uh, variable I will define. Let's say for example, before writing a proof, I will write a is equal to Python. I am defining that. So what I will gonna do here, maybe here I am writing or I in, maybe this is L. If equal to I, okay, then break. Okay, guys, I am not more focusing on this syntax part. Actually, what will happen here? Let's say, for example, I have a I have some variable here, maybe L or A something. I have a variable. What my job is to can anyone go and find whether inside this variable there is a Python or not? There is Python on. So what I will gonna do? I will move my cursor and search one by one. Perfect. I will search one by one and I will check okay whether there is Python or not. Let's say for example, I got the Python. And now they will ask me, I got it, what I am writing, I have defined a variable, assigned the value Python and I am grouping a for loop where A, means A is Python is equal to I, if you will see here I, sorry, it is not L. So whenever this Python and this Python will match, this is saying that, okay, I got the value, then do the respective operation, do the respective operation. Second time also, if I will run this program, what will happen? Again, that cursor will go and do all this thing. But here in case of dictionary, what usually happens, whenever I will get a value, I will never always refer to that value. I will always refer to that key. So what that key is that, I, as I told, key is key maximum time will give as a unique thing. So key is kind of an auto incremental thing you can do or it's a unique value. So 
next time whenever i want to find a so i will not go through all this for loop kind of thing can i jump into the seven as a key so i will go i will avoid all this table scanning or you can say data type scanning so let's say for example what is your address key is nothing but an address what your address do let's say for example i will ask can I go and find Sanket in maybe in US? So what I will go? You have to go and find each element or each person whose name is Sanket. Okay. Let's say for example, I will got your address. Maybe you are staying some any any places. Okay. I got your address or I got your Aadhaar card. Can I give in the next run? Whenever I will get that key, can I give the address or your Aadhaar card number? Or can I direct find you? You got it. That's why. So key value pair. Basically, this is a key value pair. Most important thing, if you know, if you'll go to the Spark programming, if you'll go to the Spark programming, the Spark inbuilt function is always based upon a key value pair. So what a key value pair is doing, let's say, for example, you guys are aware of group by functionality group. So let's say, for example, I want to count the number of uh, maybe number of employee present in one department so what i usually do select count of star from maybe one uh, i'll say department okay group by group by maybe department id okay so where is this department id is coming so department ID is nothing but a key type, correct, key type. Similarly, so group by means you are counting the number of a value. Can I write, let's say for example, I have 10 departments. So can I write department 10 containing 5 value, department 20 containing 6 employee, department 30 containing 7 employee. Got it. So if you'll see this output, so whenever you are going for an aggregation function, always the end product is look like a key value pair. So based upon a key, you are aggregating some value. Am I correct? Similar, that's what we are actually having. So in Spark, why this dictionary is there? One type of is that to speed up the process. And second thing is that if you if you go to the Spark programming, there are lot of predefined functions are there which are based upon the key value pair. So earlier programming like Java and all these things, you have to form a key dictionary object. Now in Python, it's a ready made That's what the beauty of a key dictionary object. Okay, got it. Thanks. So over I was. Okay, now we saw how to get the um, value out of each dictionary. Okay, so if you remember, uh, let it be that. So, how to find what are the uh, predefined functions that are available in dictionary? Just write your dictionary name and tab. So if you press tab, you will get all these things. Clear, copy, from keys, get, items, keys, pop, pop item, set default and update and values. Okay. The first and foremost thing is that clear. What clear will do? I don't need to explain. Clear will always clear everything. Correct? It will clear everything. What is a copy? Copy as your name suggest, it will copy one value or one dictionary value to the another dictionary value. Okay, we're gonna see one by one. And pop, what pop usually do? Pop will remove the element. As as part now, maybe in the list we have seen in the set operation we have seen. Pop will always remove the elements. Okay, so this is what the basic thing. Now we'll see how to add an element into a dictionary. How to add an element into a dictionary. Can I add? Let's say, for example, here is my existing dictionary 1x, 2ad, and b4. What I'm trying to do, can I add one more element? Okay, let's say, for example, someone will ask, can another element maybe 5 to Python? Okay, so what I will gonna write? 
el mil, el mil. Maybe what is the key you want to pass? Let's say, for example, I want to pass key as five, then I'll maybe write Python. So if I print D1, then okay, you can see this is the last element got added to the existing dictionary. So this is in this example, this will be the key value. You can say this is five is my key and this python is my value this python is my value so here is to add the element let's say for example someone will come and say no no whatever you added is not wrong can you change it to java can you change it to the java so can i write same thing what is the element of t5 and in place of python okay let me have sheet and see okay if you see what is the dictionary Let me add it here. Let me run it here. Then let me so much here. So my new D1 will be like this, correct? So someone will say, no, no, whatever you added is wrong. Can I change Python to your Java? So what I'll write? Python equal to PF by if it's equal to Java. Okay. If I run D1, you can say my value of a Python here got changed to Java. So here we understand two concepts. What is that? How to add an element or how to add an object into the existing dictionary. So this is the syntax. You go and add it. If there is a uh, value is also there, how to replace the old value with the new value. So here my old value was Python. What I did, I replaced with the Java. Correct? Correct. So, so it's override. Okay. Now you can so, uh, so one question. So when you add right uh, in line twenty, you added a Python. Do you uh, prefer this, or you define a new dictionary with Python and then uh, add it? It's up to you. It's it's up to you. If you want to do that one, you can do it. Or even if you want to override it, you can do it. Uh, if if let's say for example, you are you are looking for. I required maybe in the down the line I required okay D1 what is the old value of D1 to be get used then I'll make D1 as old and I'll create a new object D2 if okay. you think no no okay my, I have to override there is no use cases of my old object unnecessary while maintain a lot of things let me edit it okay okay yeah so now we'll go to the Okay. So, check what is a D1? D1 is something called as 1x23. Okay. Till now, in pop, maybe pop is come across how many is in uh, how many. Uh, data types pop is there in list correct guys pop is there in set as well okay pop is there inside your list pop is there in set so what in list it will do it will also remove the element in set is also it will remove the element in dictionary also the same pop is there so what pop will do pop will also remove the element okay so here here if indentation will be there, if you remember in list indentation is there, that's what it will move the last element, correct? But inside my dictionary, there is no concept of indentation. So what you have to do, you have to pop out based upon the, you have to pop out based upon which one? Based upon the uh, key. Let's say for example, here, my pop of one, pop of one means this key of one, I want to remove the key associated as one so which is so the whole key value pair will be get deleted now check what is that so it's always popped as x and the new value is what is that 280b4 correct so why this x is returning so it's saying that the 
value of the value of uh, the uh, key one is x. Got it? Okay. Can I remove the element based upon the value? No, you cannot do that. Let's try. Let's say, for example, here, what is the value? 4 is a value. Correct. 4 is a value. 4 is not a key. So if I am going to try removing the element based upon a value, no, you can't do that. Pop will always accept your key. The input is always a key. If you say it's a throwing an error, it's a not a key. Key error. Key error means 4 is not a key. 4 is a value. Got it? If you will say, if you remember in list, pop doesn't accept any types of any types of argument or parameter. But here in dictionary, you cannot execute pop without any argument. You have to have pass it at least one argument. That's what you say. Pop expect one argument and you are passing zero. Let's say, for example, there is no key. Here, is there any key uh, called as 6? No, I have a key 2, I have a key B, and I have a key 5. Let's say, for example, someone will come and say, I want to delete a value which is associated to key 100. I don't have a key. Let's try. That's what he's saying. It is again a key error. So you have to have pass as an argument to the pop which the key which is already present inside my dictionary. So that's what the pop will do. Okay. Now there is one more thing which is that in. So if you remember is and in, I said always is and in return you the boolean functionality or boolean output. Okay. Is and in always used for your membership function. Any function which start with is and in is a membership function. So what it will gonna check whether this element is present or there or not. If I'll write b in d1. So if you can say b is already been there. That's what it's saying that can I write b in d1. If you'll write this one, yes, it will say get true. True means always a value. So all these 90 to 95 percent dictionary uh, dictionary uh, functionality based upon the key, not based upon the value, because key is my, you can say key is kind of a primary object. Okay, So if you'll say, is there any 100 inside my key? No, if there is no 100 inside that. That's right. Okay. Now, the second thing is that how to do a delete. So simple, as simple as that, delete and all these things also, you will remove. Okay, remove an element. So here also you can delete based upon the Key also here I am deleting two out of that. Okay, I am removing the ad. But then you can say what is the difference between pop and a delete? Inside, whenever you will see pop, whenever you are removing some element, it will give you the value which value you are deleting. But even if in deal in deletion operation, you will not get that the output. So you may say that why I am not getting the value. Perfect. Okay. Any doubt till now? Now, now coming to your question, let's say for example, I have to update something. So can I use, can I, I will go and update the old element or old dictionary or I will create a new. So for that, there is a concept of copy. So copy, what copy usually do? Copy, if you remember, we will see it in the list and set. So copy usually nothing but copy the value, means whole object. Here I will not set the copy the value, it will copy everything to the new object. So what is the new object? D2 new. So I have a dictionary D2 which containing some values. So what I will do? I am writing copy. So now what is the value of D2? It's the same thing. Guys, it's very simple but you have to practice everything and so that it will be gonna remember. Here syntax matter a lot of things. Okay. So now if you want to edit here that's what I'm saying. Let's say for example my this value will be here 5 is associated to a F. So if I want to update F, so what I did, I copied to a D2, D2 new object and here I am changing the value of F to the F2 changed. That's what you can also achieve. So previously I directed, I did it in once, but here I am doing it in maybe the things. Now there is a one more predefined function, what is that keys? What keys will do? Keys will give you the keys, key element or you can say key present inside my dictionary. If you'll see, okay, let me write the example. Okay, if you'll see in this example, what are the different different keys are available? K1, K2 and K3, correct. K1, K2 and K3. So, 
the keys function will give only the name of the keys. Okay. If you'll see here, what are the keys present? Keys are present 101, 5, and G. 101, 5, and G. So D3 dot keys will give you 101, 5G. But guys, just remember here, my output is returning which element? Can anyone tell me? Here the output is returning which element? Here the output is returning a list. If you see, the keys are within a square braces. Am I correct? Keys are within a square braces. So the keys function in dictionary is, is nine. Maximum time you will also get this question. The keys of your dictionary always return a list type. Okay. What the values? I'll say what the values will do? Values will return the list of values. Okay. The list of values present inside that dictionary. Okay. Let me write the three dot values. You can find these are the values C, F, and K. Correct. C, F, K are the values, and these are the keys. Any doubt? Any doubt? No. So, the what keys function will do? It will give you the list of keys, and values will give you the List of values. Okay. Values. Now, yeah. Now so, there is one. Uh, what? So, sorry, just a minute. Yeah. So let, let's say if we use this dict under values, right? We can see that let's say we don't know how many k's are there in these values, right? So can we find out uh how many k's are present in the dictionary? How many k's are present? No. Let Let's say. 101 is equal to C, 5 is equal to F, G is equal to K, H also equal to K, okay? So we can okay. find out how many H, let's say if we define one H and okay. H is also K, is there any way we can find out how many Ks are present in total uh, dictionary, count. in the whole dictionary? There's a function count on a list, right? Is there something similar? Yeah, perfect. That's a function called as count. So mm -hmm. if you'll see, here, how many values I have? Tell me. Two. Two. Can four. I use? No, no. Four total values. But four K total is values. two. Four, two. four is total value. K is two. Correct. Two. So, can I convert this into a list? Can I convert? Yeah. It's already been yeah. list. Even if you want to. So, if, if you remember, there is a function count. What count will do? Count will count each element. So can I count here? There is yeah. no direct method or you can say direct function is there, but you have to do that way. So now so it's a do... list. Yeah. So if, if, if just, a, uh, just a dictionary, then you have to convert it to list and then you can use the count. Correct? That's how it should be. Huh. No. If you write now this values function, no need to convert. It's automatically converting for you. Okay. 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 You will get list of values. And you are getting right. Understood. Thanks. So this is short. Now, if I want to say form a dictionary, okay, let's say for example, I want to uh, form a dictionary from a list of values, list of keys, and list of values. So in that case, there is a concept called as form keys. Okay, from keys, from keys. So what from keys will do? If you'll see, I have defined a uh, list of key. I will not say list. Okay. I will say basket of key. If I will say list, it should be a square basis. Correct. I will say that. Okay. Can you someone tell what is the type of key? K is of which data? K is of? Uh, set. Tuple, tuple, sorry. 
tuple. Yeah. Okay. So if I'll write similarly, B is of a tuple. Okay. So what I'm writing dictionary dot form keys key value. So you will see. Okay. Let me take this one. This example, if you will see this values, okay, this 101 is assigned with this one and this whole value is repeated to this one, correct, then 102, then the same value is getting repeated, 103 and the same value is repeated. So, if there is a requirement, there is a requirement, okay, my key will be get changed and the respective value will be repeatedly okay. okay what can i say that a practical example let's say for example i want to assign your name to your prime minister name okay so for you narendra modi for me narendra modi so can i go and assign okay always narendra modi if you remember how we are adding a list narendra modi okay for maybe you guys for I'll give to Narendra Modi. Can I do this way or I'll preferably go with this way? So what I write? K and respective keys. Okay. Then I'll go a single value. Narendra Modi. Can I go this way? This is the best way. Yes. If you want to assign the same value repeated to all the keys, then you have to use which element, which object or which functionality form keys. Oh. Any doubt? So this is what the thing repetitive thing. I think I was just looking for an extra loop. Okay, next dictionary. Um, I think get we already got it. Get means how to retrieve that value. Give me a second. Just give me a second, guys. And out the next dictionary example. I'm somewhere. So this is what the example of a nested dictionary. If you are saying yeah, in the in the starting, we are discussing what a nested dictionary looks like. So this is an example of nested dictionary. So what usually you do with a nested dictionary? A dictionary within a next dictionary. This is called as your nested dictionary. Similarly, nested loop and nested set we have already been discussed. And here is the example of nested dictionary. If you will see, this is the key. One is the key. And the respective value is okay. one is the key and the respective value is ABC. B is the ABC. key and respective value is XYZ. For here, which is the key? Four is the key. Four. And the respective value is something a bigger one. So do you think this is also inside a curly braces? Yeah. Is the whole element looks like a dictionary as well? Correct. Yeah. Yes. So this is known as your nested dictionary. Okay. So if you'll see, even if I'll go seven, so here seven is a key, A is a value, eight is a key, B is a value, B is a key, and the C is the its respective value. If I want to access, okay, if you remember the same concept, least also L of zero of one or one of four, if you say the same concept is applicable so the same concept of getting a value out of any whether least tuple and set it will be remain as it is okay if i want to get the xyz so what i'll write if i want to get the output xyz so what i'll write output of xyz i need the output of x d of 3 d n d of 3 here my n d is your dictionary name correct yeah, i'll write n d of 3 can I write another way, which is that nd dot get of three? We just read get function. Yeah. Nd dot get of three. This is also will give. Okay. If I write nd dot four, what I will get? 
Let's say one a whole respective whole dictionary. Here you will see this output whole dictionary respective dictionary. Okay, now I want to find associated to B associated to C. I want output as a C. So how will you gonna get? I want output as C. The first way is that I have to reach out this one. Then from here I'll reach out to C. Correct. So yeah. if I'll write NDF four. Okay, I'll get this one. Then what I have to write? NDF B. Here I am getting B. That's what I have written 8. NDF 8 is associated to B. Correct? Or any doubt? So NDF 4 of 8, right? Ah, NDF 4 of 8. Yeah. Okay. Similarly, you can say three-dimensional uh, nested dictionary is possible. Yes, if you'll say this is 1. Okay, if you will see this is the one parent dictionary, this is the child dictionary, and if you will see this is the hard child dictionary, correct? So this one is one question. Uh, uh, yes. so here the uh dictionary is small, so you know, for example, line 53, right? Uh, you have defined key value four, and uh, there's a dictionary uh, uh defined to it, right? Now you said if you want to find C. Uh, you need to do ND of four of B, but here the dictionary is small, so that's where you can find it. But if there is a big dictionary that you don't know, like what is the uh, key associated with it, uh, can you also use the value, like find value C? Uh, no, no. So you have to be aware of the key associated to that value. Oh, then only so you can go with that. Okay. Yeah. You have to be it. So in practical life, how big is the dictionary? Is it like uh, readable that you can find the mapping or is really long? Uh, actually, yeah. actually, in practically, you will not get a, a direct key, uh, dictionary object. So anyway, if you'll see, irrespective of that, okay, if you'll see, okay. So in practically, you will never go and get this kind of uh, Python advanced data type, okay. So what happened practically, if you'll see any big data related problem or any cloud related ETL project or any project, you always, okay, now here I'm writing one, two, three, four, and all these stuffs. But do you really think you are getting all this like this? No. No. Always sources of two types, two or three types. So what are the first source? The source is a text file, correct? Yeah. The source is a database, RDBMS, okay? And your source is a maybe JSON or .xml file. So I'll say it's a kind of file system, JSON. Okay. Yeah. I'll write a file system and an RTBMS. So if you want to achieve something, okay. So what we usually do, we read this input. Let's say, for example, I want to uh, apply some dictionary logic and something. I'll read it. Okay. I'll store the output into a variable. Okay. Then I will explicitly convert this variable to your dictionary or something, something. Right? So yeah. then you will aware of that. What is my ID or what is my value? Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Similarly, okay. if it is a JSON also, you, you have that sample data. Correct. So randomly, we usually prefer to what our job is to, we usually convert it and we will maybe, maybe our job is to read this JSON file and load into a RDBMS table. So here there is no requirement of which value I'm getting loaded. Irrespective as randomly I'll check or test my test cases. So there I'll read, okay, this inside my JSON, there is an ID, okay. And this ID is associated with some value. So while loading, I can check it. So randomly we will go with that flow. But 99% scenario will not get this kind of example, whatever we are reading here. But here we are, why we are reading in this format? Because we have to. So whenever you are converting these or doing some transformation, you 100 to 110% you are applying all this logic. Correct. Yeah. You are applying all this logic. Maybe for reading, maybe for popping out, maybe for deleting and all these stuff. We are using this logic. That's why we are reading in this format. But okay. Okay.
so i think this is what next trade and there are few things are there so maybe i'll gonna cover inside the for loop so from the next class we'll go to our control flow statement so what is control flow statement if if loop if else elif this is one then while and your for loop so control flow statement tomorrow from next uh, from tomorrow onwards we'll go to control flow statement once the three looping statement will finish then we'll use loop with our data type to write your functional programming perfect we we have class tomorrow right uh, anbush uh, yeah preferably i think or else i'll i'll get you know by evening 5 yeah can you uh, can, can you uh, send this uh, uh, worksheets like up to till 7 right today you worked on 7 yeah this yeah. notebooks can you send so we sure. can do some practice with the same sure. I'll, I'll send it right so okay give me a second yeah i'm sorry just be online let me okay yeah. from two i think we have one only from two to seven we need I think I have seven. I have sent you two, three, and four. Okay. If not, also I'm sending one more. Okay. 